Greetings. My name is Raul. You are watching the Ukraine on Fire project. We cannot, we must not, and we will not trust the words of Russia if Putin said and promised it. This does not mean that we do not want peace, it means that we will not trust the words of Putin, but the actions of Russia. Thank God that we have intelligence data that shows the movement of Russian troops in real time. And in the leadership of Russia there are patriots who share information about the real plans of the dictator Putin. The news does not look comforting. Putin told Macron in plain text that the inhabitants of the city under siege, Marupol, could leave the city only after capitulation. I believe that Putin also proposed a humanitarian corridor to Russia. But do people want to receive help from those who killed their relatives, killed their acquaintances, killed their friends and is killing the Ukrainian military? This is a very big question. In addition to Mariupol, the destruction of Chernigov continues and missile strikes continue throughout Ukraine. According to US and British intelligence, all they see at the moment is a redeployment and an attempt to understaff the troops of the Russian Federation, which have lost a lot of manpower and equipment. They don't leave because they choose to. They leave because they were defeated. Now you see a screenshot with the losses of the Russian Federation according to ZSU. These are catastrophic figures that explain the attempts to quickly withdraw from the position. Usually at this place, viewers from the Russian Federation have glazed eyes, foam appears on their lips, and the Russians demand proof. Russia, these are the corpses of the 200th. Those who wanted to attack the city of Voznesinsk. Advancing, but their fate was distributed in such a way that they go with a load of 200. The guys are young in their twenties. Options? Well, according to the documents. There are more than ten corpses here, the rest are torn apart by technology. We do not have time to collect everyone. Since there are a lot of bodies lying around the Voznesinsky district. I have a video without packages, but we will just be banned from social networks. And I would like to remind the Russians of the story of the Russian journalist Alexander Nevzorov about the Chechen soldiers. In places of hostilities, Chechens let mothers through who try to find their sons or fragments of their bodies. After some time, these women became part of the landscape of the mountainous country. Ukraine doesn't even have that. The corpses of your soldiers are eaten by dogs. I am now addressing the Russians, put pressure on the authorities. They are obliged to take back their soldiers who gave and fulfilled the oath. They died not for a just cause, but in the personal war of Vladimir Putin with your almost complete support. But nevertheless, you have someone to save. He was in Russia. I would have left a long time ago. But there is no road. He's scared. He has fear in his eyes. He's shaking. We were even told that he went to classes as a conscript. Look, Vladimir Putin and your generals are lying. Conscripts are sent to war, snotty soldiers with a secondary education, for whom no one will ever intercede. And I am sure that now the Russian Federation is expecting mass mobilization. Mass mobilization of your sons and fathers. They are driven to the slaughter. Can't you stop them? Give them black bags for the road. We've already run out of them. If you remember, I am more conservative and always check with the Pentagon. And today, the mother of dragons herself, a representative of the State Department, Victoria Newland, who handed out cookies on the Maidan, announced the end of clinical trials of this very cookie. The results are great. The group of universal soldiers achieved maximum invulnerability and fearlessness and, according to the State Department, was guaranteed to destroy 10,000 Russian soldiers in Ukraine. But now I am more inclined to trust the ZSU, because it was the State Department and the Pentagon who believed that Ukraine would capitulate to the Russian Federation within 72 hours like Afghanistan, into which they had invested several trillion dollars. 36 days have passed. The enemy is stopped, bled white and demoralized. 
It may well be that 17,000 corpses is a more realistic figure. For information, the number of one regiment is from 500 to two and a half thousand people. This is so that you understand the real losses. And now it's official, not only the armed forces of Ukraine, the territorial defense forces, but also partisans are now fighting the Russian occupiers. Even cheese from the city of Shotka entered the battle, which turned from Russian into anti-Russian. Glory to cheesemakers. In one of the previous videos, I showed a video that is most likely a fake. Nevertheless, their allegedly Ukrainian military shoot through the legs of Russian soldiers. For some reason, there was even a soldier there who said that he was from Azerbaijan. This is a very interesting detail that I did not immediately notice. Azerbaijan is an independent state. Their men serve in the Azerbaijani army. And now they are definitely not an ally of Russia. But this is so, lonely Russian is sticking out of a bush in the middle of the desert. Now let's listen to the SBU radio interception, which explains that our military should not take prisoners at all, because they are marauders. Andre, my mother called today. He says that you will go home soon. This is what they say in Belarus and in Smolensk, but I do not know. Why did you come to Belarus and Smolensk? I don't know. They don't tell us anything. By the way, I stole some makeup. Well, testers. Well, okay. It will be a gift from Ukraine. Well, what Russian person does not steal anything? This is fine. Sneakers. Women's, branded, 38 size. Well, daughter Sophia will wear. Great. I don't have a bag, so if I had, I would take more. I also found a laptop. Daughter Sophia will go to study with a laptop. A good family lives here, sports. I got expensive vitamins, hockey shirts. Well, get it, get it. What can you take? T-shirts are always needed. And shorts. Quality, of course, take. Can you imagine how they live? How are we? So they are fighting for the fact that they lived normally, and we came here. By the way, we should also throw their gazebo here. Beautiful, lined with stone, wicker furniture. If we go to Syria later, I want to make the same gazebo for myself. We have only one Russia, but they don't want to pay us. By the way, this is my second day in the sauna. And I look at your voice cheered up. Were there no more tracksuits? No, everything was taken apart. I am sure you also noticed how excited and enthusiastic the female orc sobs and exclaims, what kind of Russian person does not steal anything? I don't even know, maybe Leo Tolstoy, Anton Chekhov, Mikhail Dostoevsky, Sakharov, Rostropovich. Not all of you are trembling creatures. And I will immediately answer the assertion of the Russians that all these interceptions are fake. Not at all, guys. It's just that the corruption of your army is such that one walkie-talkie is issued for ten soldiers. That the units are equipped with such different equipment that they have to lower the communication standards to the level of the most antidiluvian tank or armored personnel carrier in the column. The Russian military is well aware of the radio that has no analog in the world. Its name is Azart. Among the military, it is called the Green Crocodile. Almost $290 million of your taxes were spent on its development. 
One hundred of them were stolen, and donors from China and some components from Russia were purchased with the remaining money. The radio turned out to be complex and very expensive that only a trained officer could work with it, but not an ordinary soldier. There were also problems with reliability. I even heard somewhere that one walkie-talkie cost $6,000 in purchases. But I no longer believe in this, because Russia does not have so much money. By the way, this is a well-known story in the Russian Federation, Commerçant magazine, and Novi Izvesti wrote about it. These are Russian publications. As a result, this is confirmed by both the Ukrainian military and the entire world intelligence community. The Russians do not have coded communications. Most officers and lucky soldiers run around with cheap and unprotected bore funk walkie-talkies. Of course, any communication, all messengers are easily tapped by the SBU equipment. I'm talking about mobile communications. So all your sheep are being listened to from the very beginning of the invasion. And they have already spoken not only about the Hague but also about the Nuremberg trials. And now to the important information. Yesterday I reported that the hero city Irpin was liberated. But residents will have to wait until they return. Now it is dangerous to be in Irpin. We cannot protect you from rocket fragments or mines. Friends, we all want peace, but the war is not over. Russia still has many missiles and weapons. Listen to our army, it is defending our country with weapons in its hands. And remember that at this time, Britain is already negotiating the delivery of even more long-range and deadly weapons. And the United States, together with the world community, is preparing new sanctions in order to completely destroy Putin's military machine. According to military analysts, massive rocket artillery and air strikes from strategic bombers can await us. We are waiting for a real massive attack in the Donetsk and Luhansk regions. Most likely, Putin will try to raise Mariupol to the ground, as he did with the city of Grozny in Russia. Russia. But the fate of the Ukrainian city does not depend on Macron or Putin. The fate depends on us, on NATO, on the US and Britain. From their decision to transfer offensive weapons and powerful air defense to us. We will get it, but will Mariupol wait for it? By the way, I have long wanted to say that the Azov Army Regiment is not gang formations, or gatherings of militant outcasts of the Nazis. This is a separate special forces detachment, which is part of the National Guard. You can subscribe to their telegram channel Azov Mariupol. And see for yourself what kind of bandera and fascists they are. I think they are just heroes. Day after day they get out of the rubble and defend their land, their country, us. If Russia calls it Nazis and nationalism, okay, so be it. We are all Nazis and nationalists. I have a favorite story. One day, Philip II of Maestan invaded southern Greece and wrote a threatening letter to the city of Sparta. He advised submission without further delay because, quote, if I bring my army into your land, I will destroy your farms, kill your people, and destroy your city. The Spartans answered with one word, if. Subsequently, neither Philip nor his son Alexander ever attempted to capture Sparta. So we do what we must and will, what will be. That is why I strongly advise my compatriots to continue working for victory, and not to discuss the terms of a peace treaty, which does not exist. And according to good tradition, another meme about Lukashenko. And now I will show you where the attack on Belarus was being prepared from. And if six hours before the operation there had not been a preventive strike on positions, four positions, I will now show you, I brought the map. They would have attacked our troops of Belarus and Russia, who were in training. Therefore, we did not unleash this war. Our conscience is clear. It's good that we started. Biological weapons. The largest power plants, nuclear.